This scene is definitely worth recording in the history of China's automotive industry. The photo was taken on the afternoon of April 19, 2017, at the media open day of the 17th Shanghai International Automobile Industry Exhibition. The location was the Zotti Auto booth at the National Exhibition and Convention Center in Shanghai. The person with a furrowed brow and a complex expression is Oliver Bloom, the CEO of Porsche at that time, who has now taken over as CEO of Volkswagen Group. The reason why Mr. Bloom showed such a complex expression at that time was probably because he felt like he had seen a ghost. Because, right in Zotti's booth, a car identical to the Porsche Macon was displayed in front of him. The Zotti SR9 was one of the three most famous Chinese knockoff luxury cars of that era. At that time, China's automotive industry was really awkward. On the one hand, China's automotive industry seemed to be growing mature. But in terms of whole vehicle brands, if you exclude the joint ventures between China and foreign countries, it is almost impossible to find a successful local car brand. All Chinese brands, which can be praised, are almost directly linked to cost effectiveness. In other words, Chinese cars were just cheap products that were barely satisfactory at that time. In fact, Chinese independent whole vehicle brands had been in a dilemma for a considerable period of time. After 2010, the demand for domestic cars in China gradually entered an explosive period. With the straight increase of per capita disposable income in China, cars began to become another necessity that determined the quality of life besides housing. However, domestically produced Chinese cars were quickly abandoned by domestic consumers whose purchasing power was rising rapidly. Various problems that actually exist, such as technical craftsmanship, durability, and inadequate performance, as well as various long-term stereotypes at the design level, such as lack of design sense and outdated styles, were intertwined. In short, since Chinese people began to have money, there was no need for them to buy cheap domestic products. So, wealthy Chinese chose imported cars, or at least joint venture cars. However, during that period, independent brands had some bright spots, such as the Havel H6 from Great Wall Motors or the Ro RX5 from Saic. But these few bright spots could not hide the vast expanse of pessimism. Driving domestically produced cars was not dignified, which was the consensus of all people at that time, even if domestically produced cars had higher configurations and stronger power compared to joint venture cars of the same level. For example, when joint venture cars had to spend several thousand yuan to select LED headlights, many independent brands already had LED headlights as standard equipment. Although low configuration and high prices were common among joint venture brands at that time, it could not change the overall decline of independent brands. Therefore, some car manufacturers, under survival pressure, began to go astray. Just like the embarrassing scene at the beginning of the video. Today's video is about how Chinese independent car brands have gradually broken the stereotype. Okay, let's get started. Once upon a time, China cars faced many difficulties including backward technology, brand prejudice and market run-in. Now, Chinese cell-phoned brand auto brands use considerable sales and branding to correct the stereotypes of the outside world and realize the overall transition. In the past few years, global automakers struggled due to unfavorable factors such as the COVID-19, chip shortages, and soaring raw material prices. However, China's auto market, driven by its own brands, is booming. China's own brands not only strongly boosted the growth of China's auto market with a market share of 44%, a new high in three years, but also developed the trend of brand growth to overseas markets. At the same time, this data has already shown signs of the export business where independent brands have made great progress. Because for a long time, although China has always been a big country in automobile production, in terms of export, compared with many other export-oriented automobile production and manufacturing countries, especially those countries with automobile industry heritage and brand influence, there is still a big gap. Even in the past three years, China's annual car exports have hovered at the 1 million level. Therefore, it broke through the bottleneck of 1 million vehicles and entered a new level of 2 million vehicles in 2021, 
which also set a new tone for China's independent auto brands to go international market. Under the performance of this great growth, it is the joint efforts of major independent brand car companies. Among them, Saic Motor has exported a total of 167,000 vehicles in the first half of 2022. Cherry Automobile exported 148,200 vehicles. Others such as Great Wall, Chang'an, Geely, and Dongfeng also ushered in different degrees of breakthroughs in the first half of 2022. Under the leadership of leading export enterprises, China's independent auto brands are also entering the era of export in a true sense. While the export of self-owned brands is moving to a new level, the export of new energy vehicles is gratifying. In addition to the efforts of traditional car companies to develop new energy, many new Chinese brands, including Speng and NIO are also moving forward on the road to expand overseas markets. In other words, the increase in China's auto exports in the first half of this year is not only related to the recovery of the international market, the improvement of Chinese brand competitiveness, and the more comprehensive overseas layout of auto companies, but also to factors such as the growth of new energy vehicle exports. In the first half of 2022, a total of 202,000 self-owned brand new energy vehicles were exported, a year-on-year -year increase of 1.3 times, accounting for 16.6% of total vehicle exports. Last year, this figure was 173,300, what a significant increase. This performance did not come easily. As early as 2017 to 2019, new energy vehicles were also exported to a certain extent, but the passenger vehicles at that time were basically miniature low-speed electric vehicles, and the plug-in hybrid models exported in 2020 should also be the resale products of the joint venture. Unlike the first half of this year, it has become a key factor driving the increase in China's auto exports. Compared with traditional car companies, the road to export of new energy car companies is even more bumpy. You must know that the growth of the traditional car company segment comes from the system construction of independent brands over the years, which contains the formulation and implementation of various globalization strategies and the experience and lessons learned over the years, making it continue to grow in the fuel vehicle segment. Thanks to the scale and the system, the starting point, vehicle book, brand foundation, of traditional car companies in new energy vehicles is also much higher. But for the new energy car companies, in China, they are still in the stage of climbing sales, in foreign countries, they are still in the primary stage of export. Fortunately, China's new power car companies are willing to take the road of exporting, and exchange short-term difficulties for the possibility of long-term improvement. Although the sales were not good and the system was difficult to build, they responded with no sales target, layout first, because they know that exporting is not achieved overnight. If the whole system is implemented on a large scale, it is necessary to invest large-scale funds in R&D, production, maintenance and other links, and also wait for feedback in the passage of time like traditional car companies. However, the advantage of the new energy car companies is that China's electric vehicle industry chain is already in a leading position in the world, and the new energy is undoubtedly a breakthrough to go overseas. In the past, when the Chinese market is hot, China autonomous car companies lag behind the world's advanced level in core technology. The dominant state-owned auto companies generally have problems such as low efficiency and insufficient R&D capabilities, which make their own brands greatly limited in the competition with traditional auto powerhouses when they expand overseas markets. All in all, time has changed with the improvement of the competitiveness of independent brands and the rise of new energy car companies, Chinese car companies and overseas car companies stand on the new electrified track. In the context of the vigorous advancement of the global energy revolution, the baton of China's automobile exports has also been passed from fuel vehicles to new energy vehicles. In the course of this era, the image of Chinese cars overseas is expected to be further revised. OK, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Do you want to learn about more auto stories? Please keep following our channel and like our videos. See you!